Okay, good evening, everybody. I am Eric, the father of the bride, and uh, you got to hear a little bit from me earlier during the riffing part. So uh, I do have some note cards for now, so uh, won't be riffing too much. So I uh, just want to welcome everyone here. Uh, really excited about uh, Alex and Kristen. Just a great event. And I uh, just want to thank Kelly for going out and getting ordained. I don't know if everybody knew that. <laughs> so, you know, while teaching, studying for GREs, she managed to get ordained. That's pretty impressive. So. Um, so anyhow, this speech is going to be a little... I'm the only one giving a speech tonight. But this speech is going to be a little like a Lord of the Rings movie. It's got three endings, and you'll wish it stopped after the first one. <laughs> But, but you'll know I'm done when I give the toast. So, Kristen, before I start, I've really got to get something off my chest. It's been bothering me for quite a while. I did, in fact, steal the cookies from the cookie jar. Oh, no. No. Now we know. And you got blamed? <laughs> Not me. Not me. Kristen. Not me, Dan. Who? Daddy stole the cookie <laughs> from mommy. Daddy stole the cookie from the cookie jar. From the cookie <laughs> So you can see Kristen really was a lot of fun to have around as a kid. And in 2011, Kristen went to Rome to study fashion merchandising. She was there for four months. And Joy and I decided we were going to go over and visit her. But I went over about a week ahead of time. So, as it turned out, Kelly was already there. And I called them up because my plane was going to be a couple of hours late. So I said, get on the train, you and Kelly, you go to Florence, and I'll meet you there. Well, so my plane's late. I take the train from Rome to Florence, and I'm standing there in the Florence train station. I didn't have a cell phone. Neither of the girls had a cell phone. About a half an hour later, I'm calling back to Rome, talking to Kristen's roommate. I'm calling Joy at oh dark 30. I don't know what time it was. 3.30 in the morning. It, you know, I'm, I'm panicking because I'm, I'm going to have to tell my wife that I lost my kids in, in Italy. So eventually we caught each other. Um, about a half hour later, they come walking in arm in arm. They were over in McDonald's getting something to drink. <laughs> so I lost a few more hairs that day. So Kelly then left, and Kristen went back to school, and I picked her up about 8 o'clock after one of her classes in Rome. And we took the train down to Naples. So right around then, it was about 9 o'clock, and our, we were going to Pompeii for that night. So we're on the train, and we're supposed to go up to the northern part of Pompeii. But because it was so late, they stopped running that train. So we were going to end up going to the southern part of town, which we did. So we get off the train, and people on the train told us, just take a taxi when you get into Pompeii. Well, the two days that we were in Pompeii, we never saw a taxi. I don't think there are taxis in Pompeii. So we walk into town, and we walk into the first shop that we see, and there's this guy there named Pepe, short for Giuseppe. So he says, no, you're at the wrong end of town. Hop into my car, I'll take you to the right end of town. Well, Kristen was shaking. She was so scared. She's like, we're going to die here in Pompeii. <laughs> but as we walked around his car, I could see there was a car seat in the back seat, and I, I knew that we could, we'd be fine because he was probably a father. Uh, also, he was shorter than me, so I knew I could take him. <laughs> so we had a great time in Pompeii, had a great meal, and then we went down, took the train the next day to Sorrento. And in the four months Kristen was in Italy, she had never done a cooking class. And that was on her bucket list, was to take a cooking class. So we check into the hotel in Sorrento. Within 15 minutes, we're standing in a cooking class in aprons. And uh, we just had a great time. We ended up, for dinner, we ate the food that we cooked in the cooking class. So uh, it was just a great time. So Kristen, growing up, her bedroom, one of the many places that we lived in, we had a, uh, a three-story townhouse rental. And Kristen's room was smaller than Harry Potter's cupboard under the stairs at the nurseries. So the way that second floor worked is you would walk up the steps, go through our bedroom, 
then through to the bathroom, <laughs> then Kristen's room. <laughs> so every night, Alex would come over. <laughs> Kristen, who goes to sleep rather early, would get tucked in. So Alex would tuck her in. And there's a whole little tuck-in routine. You got to get those blankets right underneath. So then Alex then would have to go through the bathroom, through our room, and by then we're asleep. <laughs> sort of waiting for him to leave. And then he would go downstairs. And it was that time we knew that Alex was husband material. <laughs> but you see, Kristen, eight years early, earlier, knew that he was husband material. We, we recently found a diary page of Kristen's oh, from no. 2008. <laughs> and she rated Alex on a series of attributes. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to share this with you now. Kristen has approved of this message. <laughs> the date you met, 10th grade or 11th. Name, Alex Kastrubiak, spelled correctly. <laughs> Age, 19 almost. Birthday, October 11th. Address, phone, and email are blank. <laughs> Where you saw him first, Spanish. Any girlfriends? Me. <laughs> this is, the, is she is she competition? No. <laughs> I don't know where these lists come from. His hobbies: hockey, rock band, and my all-time favorite ho hobby: sitting. <laughs> Way to go, Alex. Okay, this is my, this, this I can't believe. Okay, the Strubiak family, listen to this. His hobbies, oh no, sorry, favorite sports, blank. We all, we all know his favorite sport is? Hockey! Ice hockey. Ice hockey. Uh, most likely to be when he grows up is blank. What do you love about him, blank? So, so, so the next section is kind of a checklist with a one to five scale. Five is excellent. Okay, so five is the best. Four is good. Looks. So for looks, he got a five. Now that's pretty darn good because Ashton Kutcher only got a four. <laughs> secret crush. Okay, not secret anymore. Uh, body. Five. <laughs> Intelligence, sense of humor, talent, personality, and popularity, all fives. <laughs> okay, now, don't get too excited, Alex, because fashion, you got a four. <laughs> Had you gone to Philadelphia University, you would have gotten a five. Um, got five for sports fan, dollars and cents. You got a five for having a car. Now that may have pulled up some of the other rankings. <laughs> Attraction five, dating skills five. Now this is the one where he really fell down. Phone conversations, he only got a three, which is fair. <laughs> Alex, I feel your pain. Appearance, politeness, prince material. Now I don't know if that's the artist formerly known as. <laughs> Yeah, it's a pretty old test, so it could have been. Intensity was a five. Now this one's pretty good. Understands me, he got a five. Now, I have to tell you, that is really good because Joy only gave me a two on that one. <laughs> so when my daughters were dating and it was apparent that um, there were going to be some engagements coming up, I told both of them, that they did not need to ask for my permission. All they needed was an insurance policy. So one day I'm working out on the side of the house and this car drives by. I didn't really think that much of it. All of a sudden I noticed the same car coming back the other direction. Alex wanted to make sure Joy wasn't home. So he pulls in the driveway, gets out of his car, and starts walking towards me. But I could see that he was holding an eight and a half by eleven folder. So I knew exactly what he was holding in his hand, which was the insurance policy. Um, although I have to say, after nearly nine years, it wasn't really that much suspense. He follows directions. 
Two weeks ago, Kristen and I were on a beach in New Jersey, and the four of us had gone up, and we were talking about how Kristen is in bed by 10 or 10.30 every night, and she said that, you know, they say you need eight hours of sleep. You need eight hours of sleep a night. Imagine how great I'm going to look when I'm old. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen, for laughing at that. <laughs> So, in addition to those words of wisdom, which is getting the eight hours of sleep, I have three more words for you. I'm not laughing. Um, if you don't behave, Mom, you're going to get another timeout. Bartender, Grandma Sunny. Number one, life isn't all peaches and cream. Sometimes it's wine and cheese. If you or Alex ever need anything, I know a guy. Bart, happy, there's a and number three, you're not the other daughter, you're my daughter. Aww. Aww. That's my boy. So, thanks, Mom. So, when, here's a little speaking tip for you. Always bring your mother with you. She sings and dances. Your own heckling section is awesome. So when Kristen was young, she found out she could get more presents if she celebrated Hanukkah. <laughs> and it was at that point that she embraced the Jewish side of her heritage. She even told a friend about this, who then purchased a Hanukkah pillow for her as a gift. So in that spirit, I'm going to propose a toast with Manischewitz. <laughs> oh no. Oh, he really brought it. He really brought it. Ashley, where are you? Oh boy, poor Ashley. <laughs> Sorry, the other Jews on my side will get you later. <laughs> you know, Bear Shabbos doesn't taste good anyway. This better be good, Eric. <laughs> okay. Betty, Billy Crystal, in his book Still Fooling Him, wrote about his daughter's wedding. When what? Remember, Billy Crystal, the comedian. When Lindsay got married, as I looked at my now grown-up beauties sitting there with their wonderful husbands, I knew they were safe. Their men were perfect fits. I raised my glass and said what a good feeling it was to know that we'd brought them up to be intelligent, charming women who good men could fall in love with. They say the father of the bride gives his daughter away. But after searching my soul that day, I knew that this wasn't really accurate. For in truth, at each milestone along the path, you've been giving them away piece by piece, little by little, their whole lives. Thanks, Billy Crystal, Mr. Funny Man. <laughs> <laughs> to Alex and Kristen. Laha'im. Laha'im.